Hey guys, this is Jim, KN4YCD, and you're watching FEP Labs Radio. Today I want to talk about this little guy. This is a Malachite SDR radio. There are several different variations of it, the official one, and then this is probably a Chinese knockoff, but it seems to be a very solid piece of kit. Let's take a look at it. Stay tuned. Okay, guys, as I said in my opening intro, um, I've got a Malachite SDR transceiver, uh, receiver, excuse me, for us to look at today. A friend of mine bought this. Uh, he got this on Amazon. I can tell you that looking at this, this is not an official Malachite SDR because the knobs are laid out differently. There is no markings on this in any way. Now, what I have found out is that the Malachite SDRs all use the Malahit firmware. Um, so while this is not an official Malachite SDR, it does run the official Malahit firmware. Let me turn it on. You can see the start. So what we have here is a very nice SDR. Now, my understanding is that he bought this and you can buy some add-on firmware, which increases the range of the device. Um, I will find out what the uh, official store-bought range is, and I'll put that in a, a note here on the video um, post-production. But um, the interface on it is pretty decent. So it has a touchscreen interface, and I'm going to get a... Uh, I'm going to try and get those lights off of our screen so we can actually see this. So we have hardware settings, audio settings, screen settings, noise reduction, what mode, and band settings on the screen. These are all touch sensitive. The frequency is touch sensitive. And then I can type in a specific frequency and what band I want to go to. Um, all the way from hertz up through megahertz um, frequencies. And we're just going to get out of that, which I think we have to press the side button. Yep, that takes us back out. Um, touching the frequency on the screen does also change it, although as you can see it's kind of, it's kind of inexact. Um, I've also noticed this works better with a uh, touch stylus than my chubby finger, but there's that. So if we take a look at the menus, we see the different hardware settings. And let me zoom this camera in a little bit, get this shot just a little tighter so you can see the screen. Hopefully this is gonna focus this close in. Nope, <laughs> that's as good as she's gonna get for us. So we have all these different settings that are available uh, under the hardware, gain, frequency correct, um, the beep level, preamp gain in dB. It has an activity timer, uh, which is disabled right now. You can swap the I and the Q channels on it. Um, there's uh, several, several controls that I'm we could go into and, and spend a while on it, and I'm just going to move on. But there is a lot of settings there. Under the audio mode, of course, and it wants you to go out of the menu and then to the next menu. So under the audio mode, we have noise blanking, we have noise reduction settings, we have our gain, our AGC on, off, fast, slow, medium, any limits we want to set on our AGC. We have EQ. We have wide FM. If you want to monitor FM broadcast, you could put this in FM stereo. We have automatic noise filtering. We have bandwidth filtering, uh, pass band filtering, similar to what you'd find on a standard um, HF radio, for example. And we have squelches and the threshold, and, and you can set the squelch or the noise reduction in dB. Under the visual menu, this is screen brightness and contrast, waterfall colors, 
the uh, fast Fourier transform, the waveform that you see. Uh, we can set the color on that. We can set this to fill or align, depending on how you want to do it. Um, and some other filtering related to visual things. Noise reduction is simply on or off based on our previous settings. You can see up here in the upper corner that the noise reduction light comes on. I hit it again and the noise reduction goes off. Mode lets us change what mode we're in. This will decode CW. If I put it in CW mode and enable the decoder, the screen will show us its attempt at decoding any CW received. So we have all these different modes that we can set. Uh, AM, FM, wide FM, narrow FM, upper, lower, CW, so on and so forth. And then, of course, bands. And I'll be honest, I this says page one of five here. I have not figured out a way to make it change pages. Cannot do it. Um, and that may be a firmware issue, although my friend Jason tells me he upgraded the firmware. I have no reason to doubt him. But the preset bands on this page are the only ones I've been able to access. If there's a button or knob to twirl to get this to change pages, I have not been able to figure it out yet. So that's what's on the screen. That's our settings that we have available from the soft keys on the bottom. On the end of the device, we have these controls. So we have our, this will change our frequency and you can adjust the steps that you wanna change the frequency and the available step rates vary by band that you're monitoring. So you can, I've seen it go anywhere from 0.01 kilohertz all the way up to 10 kilohertz at a time. It just depends on what band you have it on. USB-C, this is for uh, recharging. This has a built-in rechargeable LiPo battery in it. Theoretically, it should hook up to your computer and work with SDR software. I'll come back to that. Uh, this is more of a multifunction button. And I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the screen, but up here at the top where these blue items are, if I push the button, the top button, and I can find it, this changes our filters, right? By rotating that, it's one of those push wheels. This is our attenuation setting. And again, by rotating the wheel, I can set the attenuation level and then our volume control. And again, by rotating the wheel, I can set our volume level. All right, and all those settings, that's all that knob really does. Um, these settings up here, these greens are these squares, that one's green that says it doesn't have an antenna. It did earlier, so maybe it's stuck. But that's AGC, noise reduction, noise blanking, and squelch. And those light up when those features are activated. Um, so that's the basics. I played with this a little bit, and I'm going to demo it in a minute and hook it up to an outdoor antenna so we can um, see what kind of reception we get. And I'll try and find out the frequency range that he's got on this radio and, uh, and put that on the screen as well. So back to software. I have found some articles that indicate I should be able to hook up to a software SDR program like C, uh, SDR Sharp or HDSDR or SDR Uno with the right EXTIO DLL file that's generally required. I cannot get this to work. The documentation I have seen indicates you plug this into your computer, you turn it on, and it will install the appropriate drivers. I tried this in a Windows 10 VM, and I tried this on a straight up Windows 10 machine, and I was unable to get it to install or act like it was gonna install any drivers. It installs a few COM ports, and I've seen that, and that appears to work okay. The best that I've been able to determine that this will do for using with an external program is that you have to send the audio to your SDR program it doesn't appear to do the direct I.O. 
but I, I haven't found a definitive article that explains this. Um, so I, I'm a little confused on that at this point. Um, this is not mine. I have other SDRs. This is a buddy's. So this has some interesting uses, and I'll roll in some footage here where I did this, but I stuck an antenna on it, um, a, a two meter 440 antenna, nothing special. And um, put it on the 40, met, 40 meter band and was able to find some things that were making noise. On the waterfall. And if I turn off the LED. We've lost that noise at least. We have some other noise, and I have a lot of stuff running right now, but you get the idea. So I have LED lights on my on my computer desk behind me that if I turn them on, they're spewing out a serious amount of noise in the 40-meter band. So that was kind of neat. And, and that would be an outstanding use case for this. Of course, it also receives FM broadcasts and AM broadcasts. It'll pick up two meter 440 and all of that just fine as well and again this is this is receive only this is not a transceiver um, so I think it's a pretty nice device this is hundred and twenty three dollars on Amazon uh, for this particular model or its its clones um, once you get this you have to contact the developer, and I believe you have to give him the CPU ID that showed up at the beginning of this, which I'm going to mask out. But um, And then he gives you a firmware key, and you upgrade the firmware, and that opens up the receive bandwidth on the device. But um, I, I think it's pretty neat. I mean, I have an RSP1A, which is an outstanding SDR, and I have three or four no-name RTL SDR style dongles that work okay. And, uh, you know, the RSP-1A, I believe, is about a $200 SDR. This was 123 and Jason, my buddy, um, said he paid about $40 or $50 for the firmware upgrade. So that makes this not a bad deal um, because now you have an SDR and you have a screen and a waterfall and an FFT to look at the signals you're trying to track down. And I, I know that I saw, I believe it was Josh Nash, KI6NAZ tracking down RF noise with his IC705. This is a little bit cheaper than a 705. So that's an excellent use case for it. And if you're traveling, you know, this is an easy thing to throw in a bag and a small rubber duck antenna and monitor local comms traffic without having to worry about programming a radio if you don't want to do that. So, you know, there's a couple of really good use cases for this. The screen is gorgeous. Now, Jason still has the plastic on here, and you're going to see it live on my channel. He'll probably hate me for it, but I'm going to peel the plastic off so we can get a good look at the screen. And a little bit of ASMR action for everybody anyway. It's probably why the screen's not quite as touchy as it should be. All right, I've got this hooked up to my DX Commander now, and I don't know how well you can hear it through this microphone but I'm getting a very nice signal off of the DX Commander antenna. So that's great. Um, the other thing this has, let me turn this volume down because my brain doesn't work with him yakking. Uh, there's a screensaver. We can just turn off the screen. The device is still on and still receiving. And that's just a quick push of the power button. Uh, the other thing you can do if you go into the settings is we can actually disable the waterfall and the FFT display completely. I'm not quite sure why you'd want to do that, but we can absolutely do that. Um, I think it would just be easier if you don't want the screen on just to uh, push the button. All right, so that's that's pretty much this device in a nutshell. I, like I said, I've got it I've got it hooked up here to my uh, DX Commander. And it seems to be receiving fairly well. The controls are 
twiddly to get to. Um, the user interface, I would have to say, needs a little bit of work. And that may be because this is a knockoff and not an official Malachite SDR. Uh, this is probably about $100 cheaper than an official Malachite SDR. This has those rolly push buttons right here and here. And so this one on top rotates between... Right now it's on volume, and if you look, you can see the volume number changing there in the middle of the blue section. And if I push it, then it changes to the filter size, and I have wide, narrow, and medium. And if I push it again, then that's our attenuation level, uh, which is kind of nice that that's out of the way and you won't accidentally hit it. So those things change up here like that, but then this roller push wheel at the bottom is what changes our frequency up and down. And I had mentioned earlier, if you push this in, and again, it depends on what band you're in. So right now I have it set to uh, one kilohertz increments, and I can change that, as you can see, to different increments. So there's 10 kilohertz jumps. And of course it goes down. Uh, excuse me. Turn that down. And then of course it goes down to very small increments as well. 500, uh, 500 hertz, 250 hertz, 100 hertz, so on and so forth. And you push it just to get back. Oops. You push the roller wheel to get out of that menu and you're back to you're back to the frequency menu so i think it's a really nice device i like it i i have no need for it but were i on the market for an sdr radio i would probably want to buy this one because the feature set in it is really well thought out the interface could be tweaked a whole lot i think the interface is a little clunky in places and I've noticed that even using a capacitive touch stylus, that the screen doesn't always respond as fast as I'd like, uh, especially shutting off menus. Now that I'm doing it to show you, of course, it's going to work fine. Because that's how, oh, there we go. See, it, sometimes it takes it a couple of whacks to, to get it to show up. Um, the battery life on this, I haven't tested the battery life. I don't know what size battery is in this. I'll uh, I'll find the specs and I'll I'll post them here on the screen, right right in here, so you guys can see them. But I mean, I've had this on now for probably a good hour and a half or so, and the battery is barely showing discharge. So I feel that it's a pretty stout battery. And of course, if you have something specific you're listening to, then just turn off the screen, and then that's going to save a fair amount of your battery anyway. You can also dim the screen down. I have it up all the way bright for the purposes of the video. So, guys, that's what I have for you today in this video, the Malachite SDR. This is not an official one. This is a knockoff um, from Amazon, but it is using the official Malachite SDR firmware upgrade, which is a pay upgrade. So... Anyway, that's all I've got. Guys, click the like for me. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't. It costs you nothing, and it helps YouTube find you and make sure you get to see ham radio and radio-related content that I do. And also click that bell, because that bell will make sure that you get notified whenever I post any new videos. Guys, have a great one. 73.